This right here is the math behind what we know as trigonometry, or by the mnemonic, Sokotoa. The goal of this video is to understand why sine, cos, and tan are used when we're dealing with triangles. Now, when you mention the word trigonometry to people, Sokotoa immediately jumps to mind. It's all just rearranging equations and using sine, cos, and tan functions on the calculator, right? Well, kind of, yeah. But I never really find it satisfying to solve something in which I have no idea on why it works. So let's walk through an example together and build the concept from the ground up. To solve, we select sine, cos, or tan, depending on the information given. In our case, we have a four meter long hypotenuse, an angle of 65 degrees, and we're asked to find the side length opposite our angle. So we pick sine. Substitute the information in, rearrange the equation, plug four times sine of 65 into our calculator, and we get 3.63 meter. Now this is great, but let's get some context to see exactly why sine is giving us the answer here. Let's say we have a four meter long ladder against a wall at an incline of 65 degrees. And we wanna know how high up the ladder the wall has reached. As we can see, this is the exact same triangle from just before with the same solution. Now to me, this brings up an important question. What even is sine of 65? You could just put this on the calculator and you get it's about 0.91. So then how does sine of 65 or 0.91 tell me that the ladder goes 3.63 meters up the wall? To answer this question, it helps to think of Sokotoa as trigonometric ratios, as in the side lengths are just some ratio of the other. Let's just focus on sine and cos for now. To demonstrate, suppose we have a one meter long line that we can rotate, say 20 degrees counterclockwise. What we have are two corresponding side lengths, the blue being the opposite and the green being the adjacent. Now intuitively, these side lengths are smaller than our one meter long line, but by how much? If we could imagine the one meter long line is the hypotenuse, and we represent this as a number line. We can measure the side lengths of each side by dragging and dropping them next to the number line. What we see is that the side lengths are some corresponding percentage of the hypotenuse. So it brings the question, exactly how long are the side lengths compared to the hypotenuse? And if we rotate this hypotenuse further clockwise, what we see is the side lengths are changing with respect to the angle that's being rotated. So to answer our question, exactly how long are the side lengths? The side lengths are exactly given by sine and cos of the angle rotated. Here, let's look at the case for 20 degrees. The opposite side is given by the sine of 20 degrees, which is approximately 0.34. Similarly, for the adjacent, the length is given by the cosine of 20 degrees, about 0.94. To put this as a nice summary sentence, I would say that if the hypotenuse is rotated by 20 degrees, the side length opposite the 20 degrees is 34% of the length of the hypotenuse. And this logic applies the exact way to our initial problem, the four meter long ladder. If we pull up our solution again, what we have is four times sine of 65 equals x. Knowing that sine of 65 is 0.91, what this equation is really saying is, since the opposite side is 91% of the length of the hypotenuse, then let's just calculate 91% of four meters. Isn't that a nice way to think of trigonometry? The side lengths of the right angle triangle are just some percentage of the hypotenuse, and the exact percentage is given by sine and cos with respect to the angle. Now this should kind of make sense reflecting on so and car. The opposite and the adjacent are proportional to the hypotenuse in both equations. Okay, so this is nice for sine and cos, but what about tan? Before we dive into tan, we need to consider the triangle on a graph. As we can see, the hypotenuse can rotate in a circular motion. And if we were to trace the end of the line as it rotates, we get a perfect circle. So to be consistent with the language here, I'm gonna use the hypotenuse and the radius of the circle interchangeably. Now tan, the mnemonic with toa, or opposite divided by adjacent, can be expressed from our graph as y divided by x. Or in other words, tan of the angle equals rise over run. So just using our logic here, tan is equal to the slope of the radius in the circle. Here, let's try a couple. If we take tan of 20 degrees, we get approximately 0.63. And we can see that the slope of the radius isn't too steep, but it's positive. If we jump to tan of 45 degrees, we get one. 
so the slope of the radius is 1. Now this should make sense as the triangle formed is isosceles where the side lengths are equal. So dividing them by each other is just going to equal 1. And if we further rotate to 10 to 70 degrees, we get about 2.75. Well that sums up nicely what Sokotoa means, but this is really just the tip of the iceberg. For example, we've only been considering rotations from 0 to 90 degrees, and we all know that we can rotate by 360 degrees. So what happens when we rotate beyond this 90 degree mark? Let's lay down some things we've already established. Firstly, the circle with a radius of one unit is called the unit circle. The length of the adjacent to the radius is given by the cosine of the angle rotated. So we call the x-axis cosine of theta. Similarly, for the opposite side, this equates to sine of theta being the y-axis. We establish that tan provides the slope of the radius, but for now, we'll just keep this in our mind. Anyway, let's consider the side lengths of the triangle as the radius rotates around the circle. Starting from this point, we can see that the length of the x-axis has a unit of one, and the length of the y-axis is zero. So cos of zero is one, and sine of zero is zero. If we map out in increments of 15 degrees, and we place the side lengths onto the graph, where the y-axis represents the side length, and the x-axis represents the angle rotated from the starting point, we get something that looks a little like this for the first quarter of the circle. Notice, as we go around into the second quadrant of the circle, the value of the x-axis is negative, the value of the y-axis is positive. As this maps onto our trigonometric graph, we can see that the cosine is now negative and the sine is still positive. This pattern continues as we wrap around the circle. In the third quadrant, both y and x-axis represent negative values, and this translates directly onto our graph. We can watch this play out for the fourth quadrant, and what we end up with are the functions of sine and cosine. Now I think it's important to think of the sine and cosine as functions. A helpful way to interpret these functions is angles as inputs and the output is proportional length to the hypotenuse. And as for the negatives, this could imply direction, moving to the right as positive and moving to the left as negative. Okay, now imagine we keep rotating around the circle. Do we start from 0 degrees or 360 degrees? Or maybe a better way to phrase the question, is rotating 390 degrees the same as rotating 30 degrees around the circle? The short answer is yes, because they end up at the same spot on the unit circle, which really just means that the side lengths of the triangle would be the same. This also works for negative angles, or rotating clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Now this is great for sine and cos, but what about tan? What does tan look like? We've established that tan is equal to rise over run, or sine divided by cos. Let's bring up that unit circle again and do 15 degree incremental mapping. Take 15 degrees. Sine of 15 degrees is about 0.26, and cosine of 15 degrees is about 0.97. So dividing the two gives a result of 0.27. We map this onto the Cartesian plane, and we do this a whole bunch more times, and what we get is the graph of tan. We do run into a problem though at 90 degrees, since cosine of 90 degrees is zero, and dividing by zero is, it's undefined. At this point on the graph, we put a line which is called an asymptote, a value in which the graph of 10 will never touch, but will be infinitely close to touching. Intuitively, this is the same thing as saying that the radius of the slope is infinity. Either way, we can't divide by zero, so we'll just move on from there. Now watching as this loop plays out, we notice that when the radius is in the first quadrant, the slope is positive. When the radius is in the second quadrant, the slope is negative. This directly represents onto the graph of tan. Again, the third quadrant gives positive values for a positive slope, and in the fourth quadrant, the slope of the radius is negative. Anyway, if you watch for this long, then good for you. I hope these animations made understanding trigonometry feel a little bit more intuitive. And for the Manum community, I'll be uploading some detailed tutorials explaining the code and how these animations were created. So if that's up your alley, then make sure you give us a subscribe and get in touch with me on the Discord so I can help you make some animations for some of your own projects.